Okay, for this course, Chapter 6 begins with some rather advanced techniques for databases. For that reason, I have opted to provide these videos to review exactly what each of these advanced chapters teaches and some explanation as to why you're taking the steps the book has you take in each chapter. I hope this will help you better understand before you begin working in each chapter and that it will assist you with completing the lab and your turn reinforcement assignments. Uh, so we're going to start with chapter 6. And uh, chapter 6 covers uh, advanced reporting techniques. Um, as with what we've done in previous chapters, we will be making changes to already existing databases. Uh, chapter 6 is going to walk you through adding more details that might provide a more complete data package for those interested in getting information uh, to make decisions. In order to support some of the details required for the reports, we also need to create some queries and sub-reports. In addition, um, it may be necessary to import tables um, and um, make a connection with those new tables with the existing tables you have in the table so the queries provide everything they need. So we're going to start with where we ended with in the Chapter 5 for Bavant Publishing. Uh, so open Bavant Publishing um, as you completed it and after making any corrections that I uh, suggested uh, that you make at the end of the chapter when I graded it. Um, and we're going to start by following directions that begin on page AC366. And so, of course, I have it open and you want to always make sure you enable the content so, you, so that um, all of the actions you take are, uh, are savable or recordable. Um, so it says here on 336, the first thing we need to do is create two new tables. And the information for creating the tables, the, the specifications, are on page AC334 and AC335. So we're just going to begin by creating the first table, which is called the seminar table. And there are four fields in that table, seminar code, which has a short text, and a field size of three. It is the primary key. The next one is the seminar description. It's also short text, and it has a field size of 50. hours. It is a number field. It has a field size of integer. And then finally increments. Also number and a field size of integer. We want to make sure we set seminar code as the primary key and then save the table as seminar and close the table. And um, now we need to create the second table. It's called Seminar Offerings. And specifications for that, as I said, are on page AC335. First field is customer number. Short text. Field size of five. This is part of the primary key. And the next one is seminar code, short text, field size of three. It's also part of the primary key. Next is total hours. It's number and it's field size is integer. And then finally, hours spent. It's number and the field size is integer. And now we just need to set the primary keys. We just select both of those together and click primary key. And now we can save the table. And this table is called seminar offerings. And we can close it. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to import data that goes into these new tables. 
and we're going to do this the, the same way we've done before. So we're going to get external data. And um, the, data, the data files that I provided, the seminar, um, seminar data file is a .txt file. That's a text file. The one for seminar offerings is a CSV file. And though it was created in Excel, it is considered to be in the text file. It's data separated by commas, which is what the CSV stands for, comma separated. So let's go ahead and import the data to the seminar table first. So we're going to do external data text file and then we'll find the file and we're going to append it to the table we just created called seminar And the wizard is going to step us through. Uh, we want to make sure it's delimited. We want it is delimited. It is tab delimited. We want to make sure we check first row contains field names. And we're going to finish, and the data will be imported. And as long as you don't get an error message here, you know you've done everything just right. We can take a look at it if you like. But there's the data. One of the things I like to do is auto fit all the columns. I kind of do that um, automatically. Okay, and we'll save those auto fit changes. And then now we need to get the data for seminar offerings. So it is a CSV file, but it is categorized under text. And we're going to go and find that file. It's seminar offerings. We're going to append it to the seminar offerings table. It is also delimited and it is separated by commas, which is already selected. First row contains field names. We want to do that and we want to finish. And you don't need to save these import steps. And let's take a look at the data. And I will auto fit the columns. and save those auto fit changes and close. Now that we have added those new tables, we now have to edit our relationships so that these tables are talking to the tables that are already connected in the database. So let's look at our relationships. And so we've got these new tables here. And one of the things you want to take notice of is anytime you have a table that has two primary keys, uh, then it will also always be the many table. We're making one to many uh, relationships. And so the the one with the two primary keys will be the many table. That means we will drag from a one table to the many table. So in this seminar offerings, we have customer number as a primary key, but it is the many table and the one table is the customer table. So we're going to drag from this customer number to this customer number. We're going to enforce referential integrity and create the connection. And then we're going to drag the seminar code from the seminar table to the seminar code in the seminar offerings table because it is the many table. And again, make enforce referential integrity. And that's it. And let's save these relationships and close. So now we're ready to create a query. So the book steps you through, I think it starts on page 330, AC 340. Uh, we're going to create a query called Book Reps and Customers, and it tells you exactly how to do it. Um, the actual creating um, starts on, um, well, no, this is the first one. We're going to do two queries. The first one is the book reps and customers. So it tells you exactly what to do. So let's create the query first. We want to create query by design. And it says here that we need to use the book rep table and we need to use the customer table. And we can close this. I'm going to expand these so we can see all of the fields. And it says that we need to add the book rep number, first name, and last name fields from the book rep table. 
first name and last name. And then it says we need to add the customer number, customer name, street, city, state, postal code, customer type, resources needed, amount paid, and current due fields from the customer table. So customer number, customer name, street, city, state, postal code, customer type, resources needed, amount due, current due. And let me just check to make sure all of those were added. Okay, that looks fine. And um, one of the things you want to do is let's just take a look at the results. You can either click Run or View. And this looks exactly as it should look. There are 15 data records. That's right. We'll go back to Design View. And now we're going to save it. And it's called Book Reps and Customers. This query basically shows you the book reps and each of the book reps customers and how they're connected. Okay, we can close this query. And now we need to create another query. And this query is going to use some existing fields but also create, um, create a calculated field using uh, the expression builder. So let's just do that. We, again, we start with design, query design. And for this one, it says we need to use the seminar table and the seminar offerings table. And we can close this. And for this grid, it says we need to include the customer number and seminar code from the seminar offerings table. So let's do that. And I do these just in the same exact order that they are provided in the instructions. Customer number, seminar code from seminar offerings. Then it says add the seminar description from the seminar table. And then add the total hours and hours spent from the seminar offerings table. And now we need to create a calculated field um, for this query. And we're going to use the builder button. And uh, we're going to click in this first row to the right. And it's blank. And there's a builder button up here in the uh, query setup section. And it brings up an expression builder. And the book steps you through this on AC 341. And we're going to double click that we're using the Chapter 5 Avant Publishing um, uh, database as our source. And then we're going to double click the um, tables so we can see the tables. And we're going to use seminar offerings as the table for, that we're going to pull these fields to, to create the calculation. All right, so it brings up the expression categories. And so it, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract hours spent from total hours. So we have to first insert total hours. And we do that simply by double clicking. And then we're going to enter a minus sign. And then we, from that, we're going to subtract total hours spent. And um, that's going to be it. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to add a name, a caption to it. Let's turn on the property sheet. And the caption is going to be called Hours Remaining. And we're going to close the property sheet. And we're going to save this query. And it's called Seminar Offerings and Seminars. And okay. This is obviously a database that I had already. Now let's save it. I had already played around in this database and created this uh, query. You saw the error message I got that, that it already existed. So I deleted it. So now we can save it as the book instructors. It instructs. OK, so now this query is saved. And so now um, 
with we're ready to create our report we've created all of the items we need need to um create the report we've set up our new two new tables we've added our queries and uh and so now that that is the infrastructure or the support for our report so we it's now time to create the report and we're going to create and we want a report design instead of the wizard before we've used the wizard and so now you see it's gridded it has a page header a detail section which will have the data that changes all the time uh, depending on the data record and the page footer uh, the first thing you need to do whenever you um, um, start a, a report for by design you need to first ensure that you have selected the correct record source for that for that data for that uh, report uh, we did the same thing for forms and uh, you always check this corner if this little black button is um, this little black square is showing that means the whole form is selected um, so we want to go to design and turn on the property sheet and we're going to set the record source and according to your book it says that the record source for this table is the book rep uh, for this report is the book reps and customers query so we're going to just use our drop down arrow and find that book reps and customers hmm Let me delete this. I should delete this earlier. Okay. All right. So book reps and customers is the, is the, obviously I had to create both of those queries before and didn't realize I didn't delete them before starting the recording. But anyway, um, book reps and customers query is the record source that we, we use. And uh, what's going to happen is that's going to provide us the fields to work with to create this uh, report. So um, after you do that, let's close close the um, property sheet. What we want to do is um, set the grouping, how we want the data to be grouped and how we want it to be sorted. And for this, we want it to be grouped by the book rep number. So you click add a group and choose book rep number. These fields are supplied after we have chosen the correct source and that source was that query so book rep number and we want it to be sorted by the customer number so we're going to add a sort and choose customer number and now we can close turn this off and now you see the grid looks a little bit different i'm going to bring this up a little bit you, st you still have your page header your details section your page footer but now you also have a book rep number header and um, we're going to use that and put the book net rep number in that in that area and then all the data that changes in the details section will always be relative to whichever book rep number is selected in the top part you'll see how it works when we get to the end okay so now let's just save the report And this report is called Book Rep Master List. And so now it's saved. And we want to add existing fields. And it's showing, if we click here, we can see all tables. But right now it's showing the, the fields that are available um, from the record source, the query that, that we selected. And so we're going to add the book rep number in the... Um, in this field about right here I'm gonna drag this down a little bit so you can see it a little better and um, we're going to add the remaining fields and uh, if you look on page 3 AC 347 figure 618 you'll see the remaining fields but you can watch me do it here so we're gonna add the customer number first Don't worry about aligning these now. We can take care of that later, and I'll show you how we do that. Customer name, street. <clears throat> we can even uh, equalize the spacing between these. I'm going to bring this one up because I know I'm, I'm going to want it closer than that. And I just use the arrow keys to do that, folks. City, state, 
and the grid kind of helps you with the placement. Postal code. And then we need to add the customer type. It's over this way. And uh, resources needed. Amount paid and current due. So we've added all the fields from the query. And um, we're going to arrange these. Um, and what I usually do is I go ahead and look at the, uh, to make sure that those that are should be on the same line or aligned at the at the you know while I'm building so the easy way to do this is to is to select if you select click on this ruler it'll select everything to the right of the arrow where the arrows pointing so for this one I want to make sure these are aligned properly and and so I'm going to go to arrange align and top but it looks like they're all lined up I'm going to do this for the same I think I've already gotten these lined up. I, I usually try to follow the grid, the little grid points. It, it helps you with alignment, and we don't need to do this one. Okay, so that's it for right now. And um, what we want to do now is change these labels because we used these abbreviations, these captions before, and we want to get rid of those and actually spell these out. So for the book rep number, this label, if you click it twice, you will get a, an insertion point. And we're just going to type book rep number as the label. And then we're going to do the same thing here for the customer number. All right, so we have that done. And then uh, next thing, we're going to add some controls to this to this um, report. And controls work. Um, they have functions uh, that support them that allow them to do some things. And so what we're going to create is a field called a concatenated field. And all that means is it's a field, it's a an expression that joins two fields together it just puts two of them together so for this case for this case we want to make sure that in addition to the book rep number we also have that person's name next to the number so we're going to use the um, go to the design tab and we're going to use a text box and the text box will always be the control you use the tool you use to create a uh, calculator concatenated um, any kind of calculation so um, we're going to grab this, and it's going to go about right here. We'll try to line it up. But as I said, we can line it up later. And you'll see that it has uh, what we call, it has the control, and then it also has a label over here. You can kind of see it right here. We're going to, uh, don't worry about the label right now, and it overlaps, but don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that. Um, and we're going to click in here to, in, to create an insertion point and begin the calculation. For this um, field, we want to see the book rep, book rep number and the first and last name per, of that person, of that book rep. So we always start all calculations with an equal sign. And remember that field names are always enclosed in brackets. So the first field is first name. And so that's done. And now we want to add something to the end of this field or to onto this field. And so we use the ampersand. And we want a space between the first and last name. And in order to set the space, we have to use a single quotation, hit the space bar, and then a single quotation to close it. And now we want to add the other field, but that field also needs an ampersand to indicate something's attached to the front of it. So we're going to use ampersand and then the last field, and that's the last name. And that's it. And anytime I do something like this, I always check um, to see um, what it looks like. But let's first uh, deal with this label. I'm going to move it over so it's over this way. And the book says you need to change this to name. <coughs> 
And I happen to know that the first and last name field will not fit in this little space. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And now, let's just take a look. Let's save and take a look at what we have. And there you go. You see, we still have some work to do, but we're going to take care of all of those things. All right, so we've got the name in. Now we are ready to add another field. This is a calculated field. And so the, the name of this field is going to be called total amount, but we're going to enter a formula. So we go back to the text box. It's going to go right below the current due field. And um, the formula for it, this is going to be total amount, which means it's going to add the amount paid plus the current due. So we just put in that formula, equal, open bracket to enter the amount paid field, close the bracket, plus, open bracket, current due, close bracket, and that's it. And then for the label, we want to change this to say total amount. All right, so let's just take a look at this. We're going to save and then take a look. And you'll see something that looks rather odd. The total amount is not formatted for uh, currency, so we need to take care of that. So let's click on the control, close this fill list, and look at the property sheet. And here we can choose the format to be currency. And you'll see it looks um, as it should now. Um, all right, so let's take a look at that. Let's save it and take a look at it. And close this. And now this looks more like the others look, though they're not in perfect alignment, which bothers me, but I'll work on that in a few minutes. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, if you want to make a lot of changes to several controls at one time, you can do what we call grouping. Actually, there are two ways to do it. You can do it either by grouping or you can do it by just shifting and doing a temporary, making a temporary change. So I'll do it both ways. The first thing we're going to do is, is select these controls, not the labels. Not These are labels. These are controls. The controls will always be have a white background, the labels will always be transparent. So we're going to select the controls and, and you use the shift key to, con to connect or select multiple controls or multiple items in access. So I'm going to click on one, hold the shift key and select the other controls. Okay, and uh, I'm going to do some formatting here, but the um, first thing I want to do is, uh, let's see, do I want to do any spacing here? I think the spacing is fine. I don't want to adjust those, but I want to add some, um, change the format. I want to add, make them bold, and I think I want to expand them and make them a little bit bigger. This is the easiest one to move, but if I move this one, it's going to change all of the sizes for all of them. And the grid will also, the background grid will also adjust. I'm going to drag it out some, though, so we have some room to work with. All right, so now we have these. I dragged that too wide. Let me go back a little bit. And I'm going to, um, all right, so I didn't group these, but I'll show you how to group the next set. I'm going to move these, move these over. I'm going to. Just put these together and move them over a little bit. I just think we need a little bit more room. I'm also going to move this one over a little bit. Well, I need to move this separate. Okay. Now, uh, let me show you how. To, let me see if there's something else we needed to do. Let me select these all again because I didn't group them. I grouped the labels and then show you how to. Show you how to group. All right, so I, I guess I can show you 
how to how to group here it's on the arrange tab and the space design I mean the design and space and we're gonna group these and uh, I'm just grouping these to show you how to do it and um, and then we're going to apply let's turn on the property sheet that's on the design tab the book says you need to apply a border style and set it to solid so we can do that it is set to sol solid but it needs to be set to a one point border width and right now you see it says hairline and we're going to set it to one point and it did them all at one time we're going to change the font to 10 and now we're going to well let me undo that let's do it over here the way they tell you it works the same way folks either way alright so we changed the font size to 10 um, well, actually, let's undo that. That was an experiment. But anyway, you see how it works. All right, so we're finished with that. And now, if I, if you want to just access one portion of, um, one portion of any part of a group, then you double-click that one item. So we have one item we need to change, and that's the resources needed. It has a very, um, large lists for for some customers so we're going to extend that that control so it will accommodate more more um, items so we double click it and you see you can see when I first click they all highlighted but if I double click it indicates I just want to work with this control only and I think that's probably wide enough we'll go right to the end mm -hmm. if we need to we can pull this out a little bit more still Okay, um, so that's done. Let's just take a look at what we have. I do see something I don't like that I'm going to fix right now. You see these three fills, this one, this one, this one, these, and these two are different sizes. I'm going to make them all the same size. And I can do that by going to Arrange, Size and Space, and I'm going to make them all fit to the um, to the the narrowest. Hmm. No, why didn't that work? Let me see. To narrowest. Well, let me just ungroup this one and bring it in. I don't know. I'm not really sure why that didn't work. Maybe because I haven't grouped and I didn't ungroup it. All right, so that's done. Now we need to um, do the labels. And the labels um, are supposed to be italicized. So let's just uh, select those. And I won't put them in a group. I'll do them just with the shift key as I did the others before. And they're out of alignment too. Let's see. Oh, I think I see what was wrong. Let me undo some things. I'm going to I think these were out of and this one was the same way and that's why they were shorter because they were not they were not They were not positioned in the right right spot. All right, so now that looks better, guys. I know this is just me, but anyway, I wanted to do it right. All right, so now let's select the labels and hold the shift key and select the rest. And um. It says here we can do this again you can use the property sheet or you can use the format button we're gonna just italicize those you see it's one quick step uh, not a big deal and um, now we need to make some changes up in the book rep number so in the book rep number header so let's close this property sheet and we're going to go right here and select 
all of those at one time. And according to your book, we need to make sure that they're all bolded. And um, we're going to, I think I've already done this part. Let's click anywhere out here and just click this one control, make it a little bit longer, though I think it was long enough. And now let's just save it and preview it. So this looks a little bit better. We still have a few things to do. Um, let's go back. So we're, we're putting the finishing touches on this now. This report is giving us the data we want, but it's get, we're doing the finishing touches now. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a sub-report. And then we'll really clean this report up. So we want going to add a, a sub report. It's on the design tab. Again, uh, anytime you're using a control, you want to make sure that the use control wizards is highlighted. It'll be pink or have a background, and it won't have any background if it's not selected. But we want to add a sub report, and here's the button for the sub form or sub report. So we're going to get this sub report, and we're going to place it about where it's indicated on. Um, on page AC 359 and it's about right here we can always move it later if we need to and it will launch the wizard so if you do this and the wizard does not launch that means you have not selected uh, the use of uh, wizard controls is not selected and you need to go back just delete what you have done and go back and make sure you turn that on we're going to use existing tables and queries in the first panel of the wizard and click the next button and then we're going to choose uh, the items that we want. We want to first find uh, the query, seminar offerings and seminars. And you just go down the list till you see it. There it is. And it will, it will give the fields that we want. And uh, we want to add all fields, and that's this uh, double chevron. It adds all fields. And then we're going to click the next button. And we want to choose from a list. Just leave that option. And then we're going to click the next button. And you, we're going to name this um, Seminar Offerings by Customer because this is showing the seminar offerings by each customer number. And we're going to finish. And it's going to give us this sub-report. I'm going to move it over just a tad bit, even though we're going to adjust it some. And let's just um, save and close. We're going to close this uh, <clears throat> because we need to, to make some adjustments to the sub report. But as long as the master list, uh, this master list report is open, we won't have access to do that. So we're going to close this. And now you'll see, I'm going to close these queries. Now you'll see we have. I'm going to delete. This is also another report that I had earlier that we don't need. All right, so we're going to open this in design view. And uh, one of the things we want to do when you have a sub report, we use all the fields, and we needed to use all the fields because the customer number was the anchor for that. Um, it was the primary key, one of the primary keys, it for that um, for that sub report. We could not have added the any of the other fields without adding first the customer number field. But we don't need it in this sub-report because this is organized by customer and uh, the customer numbers in the main report. So the first thing we want to do is to get rid of <clears throat> the customer number label and the customer number control. So you just click one, click shift, and click the other, and hit the delete, delete character. And then you can select these, hold the shift key, select these, and you use the arrow keys to arrow them over. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to leave that the way it is. One of the things the, books want you to, the book wants you to do, and you can click anywhere to deselect them, is um, it wants you to make these, um, to make these labels uh, so that they stack or wrap and in order to do that if you just place the insertion point just to the left of the second word and do the shift enter key it will do that 
and do that for every label. And you see the grid accommodated. Uh, it got broader to do that, um, to accommodate those changes. So that's fine. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Okay. Uh, so that looks good. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to set this. Well, you know what? Let's just look at this. Let me save this and look at it. I want to show you something. You see these names are chopped off here for the seminar description. We want to avoid that. And the way to fix that is to set what we call a can grow property so that the box will grow to accommodate the text. So let's go back to the design. And we're going to select that seminar description control, not the label, but the control. And we're going to turn on the property sheet. And uh, make sure the all tab is selected. And then let's scroll down till we find can grow. I don't know why they make these things so small, but they do. And I never know exactly where it is. Can grow. And so we want to set that attribute, that property to be yes, this can grow. And so let's close the property sheet, save. And now let's take a look at it. And now you see the names wrap. Okay. So we still have a few things to do this sub report. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, we want to make this match the other report. Uh, first, let's make this sub report a little bit narrower, the background. So we got rid of it. Um, we're going to click the report header. If you click that bar, it it um, allows you to make changes to the actual area and not the controls, and that's what we want to do. So we're going to um, click here, and we're going to click on Format. Well, actually, we can click on Format and the Control, and we're going to set this, let's see. Oh, we're supposed to be doing that in the detail section. I'm sorry, guys. All right, we're going to do the detail section. And uh, what we're going to do is select all the controls in the detail section, and that's where we need to apply the bow. That's why that option wasn't available. And then we're going to do the um, report header. And to make it match the others, we're going to make all these italics. And now we're going to get rid of the background color. And so to do that, we do click this uh, right here, and we're going to, um, on the Format tab, choose Background. Well, let's right-click and see if it'll let us do it. Fill back color. We want white. All right, so now we got rid of that blue background or the gray, depending on your... Um, your computer and then we're going to save this this um, sub report and uh, we can look at it if you like that's what it looks like it still has some issues but we're going to address that in just a little bit so let's close it and now let's open our master list back up and now you see this looks very similar the sub report looks very similar to the rest of the report we still have some things to do all right, so um, let's re let's go in design view and resize this sub report so that it gets rid of some of that extra space that's outside the grid. All right, so that's done. And the other thing is we no longer need the let's get rid of some of this space. We can drag this detail up. And that will cr decrease the sp space between data records for each customer number, uh, by each customer number, for each book book rep. And um, the other thing we want to do is we really don't need this label right here. Um, and so we're just going to get rid of it. If you just select it and do uh, delete, it, the label will disappear. And that's exactly what you want. 
And um, so now, let's see what else do we want to do. Let's do some other things. Um, okay, let's look at page AC367. It talks about um, modifying some section properties, and we're going to do that. And um, the first one it wants us to do is, is to click the book rep number header. And we're going to do that. And uh, turn on the property sheet. Make sure the all tab is selected. And then um, for repeat section, we want to make sure that that section, that header section repeats. So that when it gets to the new book rep, it'll show that information for the new. So that you'll see a clean break between book rep numbers. So that's the main reason we're doing that. And so we also want to set it so it forces a new page. And so we go right here. And we want to make sure there's some options. There'll be three options. Before section, after section, or before and after. And so we want to set it so it forces a new page before each section begins. And that's done. And um, let's now add a title. So we're now we're getting ready to really make this uh, a, a really fancy report. So if we're on the design grid, you just click title. And you see it creates now two new parts, a report header and a report footer. And so you see it has already kept the name uh, of the report as we have given it, which is fine. We'll deal with that in a minute. We want to add to this, uh, let's click outside that title. We want to add a, a page, um, page numbers and date to this. So we can easily add page numbers here. And we want it to be page number only. We want it to be at the top of the page in the header. We want it to be left aligned. And then OK. And in the page header, the page number will appear in the page header. We also want to add a date and time. So date and time. We want to include the date but not include the time. We want to choose the third option and we just click OK. You'll see it adds it in the, rep in the report header, but we don't want it there. We want to move it to the page header. And in order to do that, one of the things we'll find out in this section is you cannot drag between sections. You have to cut and paste. So we're going to just click this control, go to the home button, choose cut, and then we're going to Click the page header, go to the home button, and choose paste. And then it paste it right smack on top. It will always lift the line. While it's selected, you can just either drag it or arrow it over to where you want it to be. I'm going to arrow it over to about right here to make a sort of a, a balanced looking report. Okay, and so now we have that, and we want to get rid of now the alternating colors and the background um, color in the header. So we're going to click this title bar, and, um, and then we're going to right click, and we're going to look at the um, fill back color, and we're going to choose white. We don't want any background there. And then um, we're going to right click the detail section. And for alternate fill back and color, we're going to choose none. We don't want any more alternating colors. And um, let's save it. Let's view it. All right, so this is pretty much done, um, except that the sub report still, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, screen resolution, but the sub report still has some alternating colors. Here's one white light blue white we need to fix the sub report so we're going to close this and let's open the sub report design view and let's fix that for the detail section right click alternate color none for the report header all right there is none so that's fine so we're going to save that close it now let's open our master list report and that is it that's done folks that's the end of this taping. I hope this will help you through. Um, oh, I see an error. The book rep number 
does does not have alternating colors turned off. Let's take a look at that. And we're going to choose this section, right right click, alternate color, none. Save. Let's preview again. And now this report looks uh, as it should. And I think they show you that report on page uh, AC331. It should look just like that. Okay, that's it. I hope this was of help to you.